Thanks everyone for joining today. My name is Elena Hull. I'm a Global Business Development Manager in the EPM division for Parker Lord, and I've been at the company for six years. In this segment, we will be discussing Parker Lord's CPL UV coatings and how they can be applied to electric vehicle battery packs. In this presentation, we will cover the CPL UV coating, what it is and how it works. Then we will cover where these coatings are best utilized in electric vehicles. And finally, discuss some properties and performance of the coating. First and foremost, what is CPL UV? CPL UV is a UV cured, VOC free, 100% solids dielectric coating that cures in seconds. It provides comparable dielectric protection to PET at thin film layers and has superior adhesion to substrates. CPL UV is easily spray applied and is compatible with existing automated spray equipment. The strong adhesion and high flexibility of CPL UV lends itself to many applications in the battery assembly. One major application area is on cooling trays. When used on cooling trays, it eliminates cracking as seen with some epoxies. Epoxies can be brittle and can crack with rapid temperature changes, shrinkage during cure, or when exposed to environmental or mechanical stresses during use. In the images on the right, you can see a mock cooling tray coated with CPL UV and a mock cooling tray coated with a competitor's epoxy. Note the cracking in the black epoxy coating that was seen after temperature cycling. Another benefit when using CPL UV in place of an epoxy is the rapid UV cure eliminates the lengthy cure process for some epoxy coatings, increasing throughput and tack time. Polyethylene terephthalate, referred to as PET, is commonly used to wrap battery cells to provide electrical isolation and prevent short circuiting, not only during handling, but in the full module assembly itself. CPL UV can be used as a PET film replacement on cylindrical and prismatic cells. CPL UV has superior adhesion to battery cells when compared to PET and will not debond or delaminate during use. This is demonstrated in the images on this slide. Note the delamination of the PET at the sharp corner of the prismatic cell. Preventing delamination and maintaining electrical isolation is vital to safety in high voltage batteries, and even more important as energy density is increased. Another benefit when replacing PET is that the surface energy of CPL UV is higher, creating an easier to bond to surface when compared to PET. This allows for much stronger bonding with other components such as adhesives or thermal interface materials used in the battery assembly. We will expand on this later when reviewing material properties. CPL UV was specifically formulated to provide good edge coverage and to have high flexibility, allowing it to be used on complex geometries where other coatings or tapes may fail. As you can see in the image to the right, CPL UV provides full coverage on the 90 degree bend. The competitor, however, shows edge pull, exposing the metal substrate, leading to poor dielectric protection on the corner. Also note the pooling of the competitive coating at the bottom of this panel. The unique property of CPL UV's edge coverage allows for easy application on complex shapes and various application styles are possible. Most commonly a spray application, but reverse roll coating and flow coating are also possible. This image is a teardown of the 90 degree bend shown on the previous slide. The coating thickness is within 10 microns between the flat edges and corner of the part. How does CPL UV work? UV chemistry can cure rapidly when exposed to appropriate wavelength and intensity of light. These conditions are tailored to the coating formulation and more specifically, the photo initiator. When UV light is applied to the liquid coating, the photo initiator produces free radicals which begin the chain reaction, polymerizing the liquid monomers into a cross-linked and cured coating. CPL UV has peak absorption at 380 nanometers. We recommend curing with an H bulb and can work with you in selecting the appropriate equipment. It is important to measure the UV lamp output to ensure the appropriate energy is achieved. Energy output can be measured with a radiometer. In addition to equipment selection, UV energy can be controlled by exposure time, often by controlling conveyor speed, lamp height, and lamp intensity. CPL UV requires 2000 to 3400 millijoules per centimeter square of total UV energy to cure. With the appropriate energy, CPL UV will cure in seconds. In addition to the rapid cure time of CPL UV, there are other benefits when using it on a production line. Because CPL UV doesn't require an oven to cure, it can be used on components which are sensitive to heat. CPL UV is a one-part system, therefore it doesn't require mixing with other components before use, 
simplifying equipment design and implementation. Additionally, SIPDLUV is a solvent-free and VOC-free system, reducing complexity when introducing into a production environment. Now we will move on to discuss cured properties of SIPDLUV in greater detail. Most importantly to our customers are the electrical properties of the coating. All of the tests listed here were performed on aluminum panels coated with 130 microns of CPL uv Volume resistivity is greater than 10 to the 11 ohms centimeter when measured with 500 volts of applied direct current. This demonstrates that CPL uv is highly insulative. Dielectric breakdown when measured with alternating current via ASTM D149 measured eight kilovolts of breakdown voltage on a 130 micron film. This equates to a dielectric breakdown of 60 kilovolts per millimeter. Another common test is dielectric voltage withstand testing, sometimes referred to as high pot testing. It is measured via direct current. The coating can achieve greater than six kilovolts of applied voltage with minimal current leakage. We are often asked for film thickness versus electrical performance of CPL UV. The next few slides show this data for high pot testing and dielectric breakdown testing. In our research facility, high pot testing is run as a DC voltage scan from 0.5 kilovolts to 6.1 kilovolts. Failure is when there is a breakdown allowing current leakage to exceed 0.3 milliamps. When looking at the plotted data, you will notice that lower film thickness has lower high pot breakdown values, which is expected but there is also higher variability in the results. Therefore, for the most repeatable high pot results, we would recommend applying 100 microns minimum of CPL UV. Another important note is that this test maximum for this high pot sweep is 6.1 kilovolts, and all samples tested at 125 microns and 150 microns exceeded this limit and did not show a breakdown failure. The same test was repeated using ASTM D149 to measure AC dielectric breakdown versus film thickness. When testing insulative materials, we test in oil to prevent arcing from the electrode to the ground, ensuring the breakdown measurement is through the material being evaluated. This test is measured until the applied voltage caused a breakdown. There is not a voltage limit as there was for the DC high pot testing. This plot demonstrates similar results to the high pot testing with thinner films having lower breakdown and higher variability. Depending on application needs, we would make a similar recommendation to use 100 microns minimum for the best and most repeatable results. CPL UV is very flexible and passes a nine millimeter mandrel bend without cracking or delamination. This is in stark contrast to many epoxy coatings, which can exhibit cracking when exposed to flexing or mechanical stresses. Note the image on the right comparing CPL UV to a competitive epoxy using the mandrel bend test. You can see cracks in the epoxy coating, exposing the metal substrate underneath, thus eliminating any electrical isolation properties. This high flexibility allows CPL UV to coat complex geometries and large format parts, which may see flexing or warping during use. CPL UV coated substrates and PET wrapped substrates were compared for lap shear strength when bonding four major classes of adhesives used in battery technology. Not only did the substrates coated with CPL UV show greater adhesion, CPL UV also showed more favorable failure modes as compared to PET film. This is demonstrated in the image on the bottom right, showing CPL UV coated substrates achieving cohesive failure at the bond line compared to the PET film, which exhibited adhesive failure in most cases. Silicones, urethanes, acrylics, and epoxies are some of the most common thermal interface materials or adhesives used in battery assemblies. These materials were chosen from the Parker Lord portfolio to compare the different chemistries for adhesion strength. As shown in the graph, the substrates which were coated with CPL UV, indicated by the blue bars, achieved 300 to 3800 percent stronger bonds than those substrates that were wrapped in PET film. Strong adhesion is critical in battery applications where delamination or debonding of TIMS can lead to thermal runaway and safety issues. CPL UV has undergone many environmental performance testing based on different OEM requirements. Some of the common tests are listed here. Thermal cycling between negative 40 and 85 degrees C with and without applied humidity showed no deterioration in properties after 50 cycles. In addition to thermal cycling, coated substrates are subjected to constant high heat, high humidity conditions. 
Again, the coating showed no deterioration in adhesion or electrical properties after 500 hours of exposure time. Other common tests include various fluid exposure, such as coolants or oils, and salt fog testing. This is by no means an exhaustive list because we have a limited amount of time today. So if you have further questions about environmental performance or durability testing, drop us a question and we will follow up offline. I would like to thank you all for joining me today for this presentation about Sibial UV. We will now transition into the Q&A session of the webinar.